A CNN exit poll has just dropped. 75% of voters say they're unhappy with how America is being run. That's not a good look for Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. That's right. And Kamala Harris has tried to paint herself as the candidate of the future. She keeps saying on the campaign trail, we're not going back, referring to the former president, Donald Trump. But of course, she is the person who was part of the administration that's been in office for the past four years. And you also see from CNN, NBC and Associated Press exit polls pretty consistently that the top issues for voters are the economy, immigration, democracy and abortion. We know that Trump edges out Kamala Harris on the economy and immigration. So then the question is, where do these voters fall? on democracy and abortion. One of the cross tabs I found very interesting in the early Associated Press exit polls is that young voters under 30 are actually the least likely age demographic to cite democracy as their most important issue heading into the voting booth. That's actually a characteristic of voters over the age of 65, which would typically be considered Republican voters, but are breaking for Kamala Harris. So I think you're actually seeing a really interesting political realignment happening this election cycle. And then on the abortion question, NBC has 50% of voters trusting Kamala Harris more on that issue compared to 44% of voters for Donald Trump. If she only enjoys a six point advantage on the abortion question, I think that's a big benefit to the Republicans. Mm. Looking at the fundraising during this election campaign, Kamala Harris has received nearly triple the amount of money compared to what Donald Trump has received. And the fact that the polls are so close, what does that say about Kamala Harris's campaign? It's certainly not a good sign, but it is typical for Democrats to outspend Republicans in basically every election. Uh, Kamala Harris is backed by far more billionaires, for example, than Donald Trump is. They've long had a big PAC infrastructure. Uh, PACs, of course, are separate from the campaign, and therefore they do not have campaign contribution limits. People can donate unlimited amounts of money to PACs. You'll see people giving millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. On the Republican side, Elon Musk pouring $20 million plus into America mm. PAC on behalf of former President Donald Trump. Um, so spending is a big part of the Democrats' uh, strategy. Now, on the Republican side, they're hoping that a really sophisticated data-driven ground game is able to overcome the fact that the money is really with the other side. What's your assessment of the media's coverage during this election campaign? How does it compare to previous years? And also the impact that celebrities are having. We're seeing celebrities speak out and encourage voters to vote the way they believe. What difference do you think that'll actually make? To start with the media, it's pretty consistent with what we've seen over the past few election cycles, particularly when it comes to coverage of Donald Trump. They are very hyper-focused on perceived gaffes on the campaign trail and uh, issues of his character and personality. They've really bought into uh, a really uh, heavy degree the idea that he will be an authoritarian or a fascist if he gets a second term, which is a line that's been pushed hard by the Kamala campaign over the past couple of weeks as the joy has seemingly vanished. Um, and the media is all in on trying to prop her up, despite the fact that she was involved in the apparent cover-up of Joe Biden's cognitive decline. Um, they hid that until it was clear uh, and obvious with Joe Biden's debate performance. They mm. then turned around and immediately started pushing Kamala, even after admitting prior to that that she wasn't a very good vice president. Um, and then on the celebrity endorsement question, uh, they don't typically have much impact. The only time a celebrity endorsement has a really big impact is when their endorsement is a surprise. The problem with Kamala Harris is that the celebrities she's trotting out are known Democrats. So people are not shocked to see that Beyonce is going to be helping to fundraise or appearing at a rally for Kamala Harris. Actually, the most important endorsement that we've seen over the past couple of weeks is independent podcaster Joe Rogan saying that he is supporting and endorsing Donald Trump. He is the number one podcaster in the country, and he speaks to a lot of disaffected young male voters that might not typically participate in elections. And he's someone who was previously a Bernie Sanders supporter in the 2020 Democratic primary. That's a big get for him. And I'm sure Kamala Harris is regretting not working harder to do that podcast. 
Absolutely. Look, it's a really interesting point, isn't it, that you've got people like Joe Rogan, Elon Musk endorsing Donald Trump, and you look at Kamala Harris's campaign and around her, she has Tim Waltz and some celebrities like Oprah. Looking at Donald Trump and the people who are around him, do you think that's been a pretty big draw card for him, the fact that he has Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, and he's now working with RFK Jr. and people like Tulsi Gabbard? There's two very different attitudes between these campaigns about how they deal with third party candidates. Trump has taken the move to embrace them, bringing them in to his transition team when it comes to RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard, having them out on the campaign trail, cutting ads for him, Nicole Shanahan appearing in several Trump ads during his last rally in Grand Rapids, Michigan last evening that I attended. And then on the Democratic side, you see Kamala Harris actually shaming and talking down about a third party candidate. She's been running ads against Jill Stein in Mich Michigan and Wisconsin because Jill Stein threatens to take away some of those uncommitted voters that are unhappy with the way the Biden administration has handled the conflict with Israel and Hamas. And uh, people who are sensitive or sympathetic to third party candidates do not like those candidates being demonized. They do not like Kamala mm -hmm. Harris comparing uh, Jill Stein to David Duke from the KKK or Vladimir Putin because they have express some support for some of her positions, that's actually more likely to drive those voters further away and seems like more of an attempt to blade blame and scapegoat if Kamala doesn't pull this out. Mm. Look, both sides have been told that this is the most important election in history, that there is so much at stake. Obviously, there's only going to be one winner. No matter which way this goes, what do you expect will happen in America in the coming days and weeks? I think it's going to be probably pretty tumultuous regardless. Some college campuses are doing remote classes, particularly in D.C. for the rest of the week because they're worried about potential protests and riots. And some colleges are even taking it a step further. And in case of a Trump victory, they are preparing cry rooms, coloring books, oh therapy dogs for students. I know it's outrageous. And this we saw this in 2016. There were a lot of campuses that canceled classes because students were apparently emotionally unprepared to handle the Trump victory. Um, I think, you know, talking to my friend, Richie McGinnis, who's an independent journalist who has covered a lot of these riots, he pointed out that if Kamala wins, there could potentially be protests around the certification of the vote, similar to January 6th or even closer to Inauguration Day. Whereas if Trump wins, the protests and riots would probably be immediate and we would see them in major American cities, including DC. Amber Duke, it's brilliant to speak with you. Thank you so much for making the time to speak to us on election day. We really appreciate it. Thank you.